Okay, so today we're going to draw the eye. And I'm going to do this in multiple layers and with uh, several different colors. So my first layer, I want to use a light blue to use for the construction lines in that basic outline so I can change that shape and then I'll go over it again with black. So, so an eye consists of five different angles. There's three on top and two on bottom about like that and then I'm gonna draw just a little box where the tear duct is a little circle right there and then to make sure that my that the shape of my eye is correct I'm gonna do a couple of guidelines so obviously an eye is completely round but it is the eyelids that the de that determine the shape of the eye. So if I did a horizontal line, I'm going to use my ruler really quick. To I went right through the middle of my tear duct and drew a straight line. And then I'm going to do another line that's a that starts in this corner that's about between a 35 to 45 degree angle. Doesn't need to be exact. So that's a 41 degree angle. So I need to adjust this back corner because it needs to match this level horizon line. So I'm going to adjust, adjust that and this one doesn't look like it needs too much adjustment. So from this corner to this corner, then a horizontal line from the tear duct to the outside edge should be where my angles are. Now later on, I'm going to round off these lines in a separate layer in black. Now I'm going to draw the shape of the eye, which obviously is a circle. I'm going to draw that several times until I get a as close to a perfect circle as I can. I'm going to make several lines until I get about the shape that I want. So my eye is in the center of that circle. That's the whole, uh, was it the, the square, the white part of the eye? Then I'm going to draw the iris, and the iris is going to be about right in the middle of this circle and it's just going to barely touch the bottom eyelid. But it's going to go above the top eyelid. And the same thing I'm going to draw multiple lines until I get as clean of or as perfect of a circle as I can. Okay, so that that's the colored part of my eye, the iris. Now I'm going to draw the pupil, and I'm going to do about half the size of the iris. Same thing, several lines until I get about the shape that I'm after. So there I go. So I've got the sclera, the, the iris, and the pupil. Now I'm going to switch to another layer, add a layer, and I'm going to do this in black. And then what I want to do is I want to fill in, well, a couple things. So first I'm going to fill in the pupil. I'm just going to adjust the size of my brush. Oh, and by the way, I'm using the pencil tool because that allows me to blend a lot better than what a pen does. So I just want that pr pretty black. Um, I'm going to adjust my brush size down, or my pencil tip down, and I've got, I'm going to keep my opacity all the way, and I'm going to trace over my blue line, but I'm going to round these corners. They're too sharp. And this is where I'm going to make any adjustments 
the shape of my eye. So I'm going to bring this up a little bit higher, make it a little bit more rounded. I'm going to do that over. Jaggedy hands today. I'm just going to round off these corners. And give this bottom line just a little bit of a curve. And now I'm going to outline my iris. Now when I, every picture that I draw, I rarely use my first drawing. I'm, I'm constantly have to make changes and adjustments to it. So once I get close to the end, I'll look at it and see if I've got my eye too thick, too tall, too wide, too narrow, what, whatever. And I can make adjustments from there. And I can already see I want this just a little bit, just a little bit more of a curve. So, so I got two options. I can erase my line or I can turn my... Uh, pencil color to white and then draw over the top and that seems to give me a little bit more control over erasing. I'm just going to clean up my lines just a little bit. Okay now I'm going to start on the colored part of the of the iris and if you look at an eye there's lines that go from the outside edge, a little smaller, from the outside edge of the iris close to the pupil. They end just before the pupil. Let me uh, let me do this. So if this, so my pupil is going to come out to there. So that's where my lines need to start. This is where the color part of your pupil comes from. Make that a little bit of a thicker line. There we go. So I'm, it's not going to quite touch the pupil. It's going to come close. So I'm just going to do this quickly, but when you draw your spend Spend a fair amount of time so that it looks nice and even. And I'm going to shade around the outside edge a little bit more. If you look closely at your own eye in the mirror, you'll notice that's where the deepest part of the color is. Okay. Now, I need to clean that up a little bit, so I need to either erase this or go over it with the white. Let's try the erase tool. So I want to clean up right around the edge. Oops, I erased too much. Okay, so now I've got the shape of my eyelids, the iris, the pupil, and while I'm here, I'm going to add in the highlight, or the reflective light on the pupil. So remember, uh, when, when you draw a sphere, you've got dark edges and, and then the highlights and the midtones. I'm going to imagine that my light source is coming from right here. So I'm going to erase out Okay, so there's the highlight or the reflective light starts in the pupil and goes all the way through the iris. Now another part that I, I, I wanted to do earlier and I apologize I forgot, but we can easily add it in now. 
is the the ball or the circle of the eye needs to be shaded in the same way that we shaded the circle into a sphere. So I'm going to go back to my black. Actually, I'm going to do this in a separate layer. I'm going to use my black again. I'm going to lower my opacity because I want this shading to be fairly light and increase the size of my brush tip so that I don't have the pencil marks. So I always practice off to the side. All right, so, so this is our sphere and we're gonna shade it in according to our light source. So obviously all this part is darker part of the ball or the sphere and I'm gonna to have to I'm going to erase obviously outside of the lines but e even though the white part of our eye is white it still has some shading or some value change to it And I may, at the final step, I may end up coming back and lightening this a little bit if I believe that it's too dark. But that's where the final details come into play. Okay, so so that, that would be my sphere, my shaded sphere. So let me hurry and go in. Now I want to quickly erase around the edge. So erase or go over it in wide, whichever you prefer. This erasing seems to work a little better on this part of it. Okay, so that gives me some value in my in the white part of the eye, which will help it to look 3D, give it some rounded form. Okay, and now let's go one more layer in black, and I'm going to add in the eyelashes. So eyelashes, even though eyelashes are, are prominent, I don't want to, I don't want to draw them individually like this, and I don't want to draw them too too big. I want them to be, I want to minimize the effect of the eyelash so that it doesn't, so that the viewer's eye isn't distracted by it and it's not overtaking the picture. And so instead of, instead of doing individual eyelashes, I'm going to do them in clumps. I'll pass it a little bit. And I'm going to curve them Instead of going, instead of going a straight spike like that, I want to curve them to show that they're coming out from the eyelid. And and towards the end of my drawing, if I believe that my eyelashes are still too prominent, I'll go in there and erase some out. And so this is uh, eyelashes and eyebrows are where you're going to differentiate between if you're drawing female or male eyes. So the, the shape of the eye stays the same. It's the eyebrows and eyelashes that are going to make a difference. And the bottom eyelashes aren't, they, they aren't quite as wide as the top. If you want to try a more realistic style of eyelash, you can try this one as well. I'm going to zoom in so I can show you. A real eyelash comes from under this part of the eye, not on top of it the way you kind of see cartoon eyelashes drawn. So 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to curl these lashes up a little bit from the bottom and you can put them in clumps and have some long ones and some short ones. But if you make this little curve at the bottom, it makes them look like a much more realistic lash. And I'll turn on the layer where I've done some other ones. And I've got them kind of going in different directions. But go ahead and experiment with your style of drawing and see which type you like. Okay. Now I'm going to add the lines for the eyelids, which is just going to be a thin line around the top and the bottom of the eye. Let me get my right width here. And this is where the fold, your eyelid makes a fold, and so it's a little bit, a little bit thicker and a little bit darker to show kind of a, a crease. So the one on top goes all the way around the eye, the one on bottom, not quite. About like that. So then I'm going to go in and just widen this line a little bit, a little bit darker. Like that. And then depending on the age of the person, whether you're drawing a, 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 a kid or a, an adult or a grandpa or grandma, you're going to have a few lines under their eyes. So you can either add those or leave them out, just depending on the age of the person that you are drawing. Okay. Now I'm going to do, uh, I'm just going to keep doing these on separate layers because it's easier to erase from one layer instead of having to, so it doesn't goof up everything. Now I'm going to draw the eyebrow, and I'm going to draw a male eyebrow so they are flatter and skinnier. And I'm going to, for one trick, is I'm going to, I'm going to shade the, the center part of the eyebrow in darker than the edges. And I'm not going to draw individual I'm going to draw individual hairs, but I am going to shade them in in the direction that they would grow. And this part you can go fairly fast on. There's not a lot of detail or too precise about that. But I am going to come back and shade in the center part a little darker because that's where the hair is the thickest. Let's get that down a little bit, give me a little more room to draw. And I, I may draw a few individual hairs in there, but the viewer's eye will make up the rest. Shave that in just a little bit more. Now if I was drawing a woman's eye, her eyebrow would be more of an angle and thinner, about like that, where a male's is flatter and a little thicker like that. Okay? So now I've got all the basic structures of my eye. Um, I'm going to, so now I'm just going to do some shading. Um, 
like the corner of my eye. So your eyebrow, the bone structure, sticks out the most right here. So that's where you're going to have the most shadow or the, like the deepest part of the socket. Got another line here with another crease. And this is where you can really spend a lot of time getting some details in there. And I am going to hide my blue structure lines and then that will let me see what I've missed. I need a little line there. I need to make my tear duct a little darker. That's the red part of the eye. There's really not too much white in there. Um, I can see what lines I need to thicken up. Make make them straighter. Clean up the edges a little bit. I'm gonna. This is where I'm gonna add value. Is a value change is what's gonna turn this shape into a form and the value change will also bring out the highlights. So the detail that we want the viewer to see will be where the value changes are and the most detail. Maybe a little bit more work on my eyebrows or my eyelashes. but still not too or bearing. And these need to be just a little bit taller. Okay, then uh, I'm just going to maybe I'll shrink it down and look at my picture and see down to life size and let me make some adjustments on on the line width again. Maybe just a little bit darker. And bring in a little bit more shading in this corner of the sphere. See if that'll give a little bit more roundness to the shape of the eye. It'll it's an illusion. We're going from a two-dimensional, making it look three-dimensional. Okay, so then I, I can play with this for another half, 20 minutes to half an hour, just making sure that my lines were nice and straight. Um, I might go over it with my white pencil just to clean a few things up here and there. And basically that's it. All right. Thanks and uh, get after it. Hey, it's me again. Mr. Peacock has been drawing a male eye, but I've been drawing a female eye, which is admittedly not as good as his. But I wanted to show you as I finished it off, just so you could see some of the little details that make a masculine and a feminine eye a little more different. The first and most obvious thing are the lashes, which I showed you earlier, but also the eyebrow. A female brow is going to be a little finer a little thinner and more delicate and it has a higher and more arched shape a lot of the time and the hairs tend to go mostly in the same direction where sometimes men's eyebrows kind of go all over the place. The other thing is and you'll notice that especially if you wear eyeliner or do makeup is that down here where the lashes come out I'm going to switch to a white pencil um, you also have this water line that is right, right above where the lashes start to come out of the eye. And I like to put this in my drawing because I feel like it's a little detail that makes the eye look super realistic. 
And if your if your drawing style is more sketchy and and fast, then this might be a detail that you might not add into yours. And then because this sticks out from the the sclera or the the white part of the eye. You need to put just a little bit of a shadow just to show that that has some depth. And this waterline goes all the way across. Yeah, look at different pictures of different eyes. Look at how their shapes are different. Look how their brows are shaped differently. Um, experiment with these things, and we're excited to see the work that you guys do.